Hi, I'm Charlotte and this is Tired Mama Tries to Read. Uh, so I totally missed the POC a thon, which was going on all over my YouTube a couple of weeks ago. Um, it just ended on the 19th. And I was intending to put up a, a video of what I would have chosen if I definitely could commit to a readathon, but then I didn't even get time to do that. So um, I've, I'm gonna show you the books I would have chosen because I still think um, they're really interesting and I am gonna try and read them before the end of the year. So I've made a commitment of some sort. Uh, the first one, um, by the way, if you didn't know what the POC a thon was, it was reading books by people of colour. And it had sort of five branches. One was to read books with main characters from three different races. Uh, the second one was read a classic book by an author of colour or a translated book. Uh, the third was read a sci-fi book or fantasy book by a person of colour. The fourth was a poetry book. The fifth was a book that deals with racism, prejudice or immigration. So, my dog is going to bark because he's a lunatic and there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm so sorry. It's because my husband does outside with our child and um, trying to keep my child busy. And so Eddie's just barking at everything they're doing out there. <laughs> um, okay, first one is um, uh, Chinua Achebe's Things Fall Apart. So I've had this on my shelf for a really, really long time, probably like a decade. And it's pretty shameful that I haven't read it. I think this covers a classic book. I don't think it's translated, no. So it's um, a classic book and I would imagine it deals with racism um, and issues such as that. So that's one of them. Uh, the second one is Leonora Brito, That's Love. And if you haven't heard of her, it's probably because she's a Cardiff writer or she was a Cardiff writer when she was alive. And she's one of the few, in fact, I'm, I can only think of one other writer that is a person of colour who writes from a Welsh perspective. So um, a really much needed voice within the Welsh writing in English community. Um, these are all short stories. It's a really cool little book and I did read some of them when I was in university but I was just so um, pushed for time that I didn't finish the whole thing so I'm gonna and to be honest it was so long ago that it will be like reading it afresh um, the third one is Jane Welch's The Death of Jim Loney so James Welch grew up on I think a Blackfoot reservation Blackfeet and Fort Belknap reservations in Montana and this book covers the life uh, the life and times of a mixed blood um gentleman called Jim Loney who is of white and Indian parentage so um when I was at university I read a lot of books about um people of mixed blood parentage so I'm gonna have to really sort of <laughs> step away a little bit and try and just read it for pleasure so but that does look really good um this book is the only book I had to buy into this readathon I tried to pull books from my shelves um Doris from Aldi Books was saying how readathons are really great chances to go into your backlist and she's totally right so everything has come from my shelves a lot of it's been knocking about for a long time but this is one I had to buy because I don't own or really read any sci-fi or fantasy so that was a tricky one I couldn't have pulled any sci-fi or fantasy off my shelves so to find sci-fi or fantasy by a person of colour was definitely not something that was going to happen um, without me purchasing something. So I got Falling in Love with Hominids by Nalo Hopkinson and it looks amazing and I kind of feel like it might convert me to, to a fantasy because I've read a little bit of it and it's really really good. Um, there she is, there's Nalo. Uh, looking forward to that. Let me know if you've read any of hers because I know she's like a cult writer and I feel really ignorant that I've not read her so let me know. Uh, this is my poetry collection, um, Walking with Ghosts by Quoley Driscoll. And I got this ages and ages ago. I love Salt Publishing, who are the publishers of this book. They do amazing poetry collections and they sometimes do little offers. Um, so I bought this with a stack of other ones, but I haven't got around to reading this one yet. And this one is covers poetry and uh, the poet is a Cherokee two-spirit spirit, queer writer an activist, also of African Irish, Lenape, Lumbi, and Osage ascent. Um, she slash he is currently living in three fires and Huron territories while pursuing a PhD in rhetoric and writing at Michigan State University. So it's written from a contemporary Cherokee queer and mixed race experience. That is going to be awesome. Very excited to read that. Um, and then this one is probably the oldest book of all that I've had knocking about on my shelves. This is Tash Owes, The Harmony Silk Factory. He's written a few things since, but this is his first novel. I got this when I was but a young bookseller and it's signed first edition. 
Um, at the time, everybody thought he was going to be really huge. Um, and I think he has been really successful. But to my shame, I just bought this because I thought it was, I was into collecting at the time. And I literally couldn't be interested in anything less now. But at the time, I was like following the lead of all my fellow booksellers and bought it for that reason. And, I, and by happy chance, I'm really just pleased now that I've got it because it does genuinely look like an awesome book. So Tash Ao was born in Taipei and brought up in Malaysia and then he moved to England in his teens. Um, it juxtap this book juxtaposes three accounts of a crucial and haunting episode in the history of a Malaysian Chinese family. Um, Joseph Conrad, Somerset Morn and Anthony Burgess have mapped our idea of Malaysia. Now with the Harmony Silk Factory, we have a new voice from Malaysia itself that reshapes this literary landscape. Set against the backdrop of a country in crisis, this novel is both a mystery and a confession that dramatises the ambiguous nature of identity. So I think that in combination, well, with several of these, is going to cover um, race, what was it, racism, prejudice and immigration. There we have it. Those are what I would have read last week if I had had any time. And I will try and read them before the end of 2017. Oh, we're 18. <laughs> says a lot about my uh, my tiredness levels. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!